Hello and welcome to today's Ninja Trader ecosystem event, Next Generation Support and Resistance for Active Traders. Now, this webinar is presented by NinjaTrader LLC, which is a technology company responsible for developing and supporting the NinjaTrader trading software. Brokerage related questions should be directed to the NinjaTrader brokerage team using the phone number or email on the screen. I'll also post that into the chat. And if you are new to NinjaTrader, please make sure you sign up for a free NinjaTrader account, which includes access to 14 days of complimentary real time market data. Our platform is always free for advanced trade advanced charting, strategy back testing, and trade simulation. You can create your free account by clicking the following link on the screen and then clicking get started under the welcome section. And before I turn the mic over to Joshua, it's important to understand that futures, foreign currency, and options trading contain substantial risk and is not suitable for every investor. It is possible to lose all or more than one's initial investment Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And also please remember that these trading solicitations or training sessions are not solicitation nor recommendation, but simply educational in nature. Now, thank you again for joining us today. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome Joshua into the Ninja Webinar Group. Awesome. Thank you, Thomas. A risk disclosure, because this can't be done enough in this industry. Futures, stocks, forex, and options trading contain substantial risk and is not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so please be smart, everyone, and don't trade with your lunch money. Okay. So out of the gate, I want to I want to mention that I'm not a marketer. Trying to sell stuff is is not my cup of tea, nor is it my primary focus. My focus is on finding edge in the markets that I can use and um, if I can bring those, those fruits, um, to the industry for others to benefit from and also help, um, fund my own research and development, then it's a win-win. I put a huge amount of, of resources into, um, the software that I'll be covering today. And, um, I'm excited to share it with you guys. And my hope is that today I'll be able to demonstrate, um, this focus on edge that's driving chart map development. So today I'm going to be sharing about uh, this new support and resistance technology called chart map, chart map that we just released at the beginning of the year. It's something that we've been working on for uh, quite a long time. It's really taken a long time to put together all the different components uh, from the pattern recognition back-end engine to the front-end visuals and um, everything in between. And so it's, it's great to have it out the door. We're still rolling out new new releases. We actually just rolled out um, an upgrade today. It's kind of in, in the process, and I'll, I'll share a little bit more about that later. If you do happen to sign up uh, today or during the webinar at any time, because uh, I do offer a free trial, and I'll share more about that and how you can get a discount. Um, just, just do note that we're still rolling out that update. And so some, uh, data isn't available for some of the markets. So just keep that in mind, but it should be, should be all caught up and good to go by tomorrow. So, um, but yeah, all that to say it's, um, it's been a, a fun ride of development and we're, we're continuing to iterate and innovate on this concept that I'm exci excited to share, share more about today. So, um, I do want to be very clear on what chart map is and what it isn't. So what chart map is doing, the, in essence, it's it's automating a, a timeless pattern recognition technique. It's putting it into algorithmic form, which you can ima imagine has exciting implications for traders. Uh, I do want to set the expectation up front. Chart map is not a red light, green light system. I know that everybody wants that. Everyone wants to be told when to trade or to have it done for them. Uh, but as we'll talk about later, 
full automation has its challenges with profitability over a long time horizon. Chart map is designed as an automatic analysis solution to increase your market awareness without, uh, without mental fatigue so that you can focus on making uh, good trading decisions. So if that resonates with you, then I think what I'm going to share with you today will be valuable. So uh, I'll start with just a little bit of background, um, uh, background concepts about um, con about chart map, and then uh, a little bit of chart work so you can understand the concepts that are built into chart map, and then give you uh, a demo of chart map on some recent market data. And then I do have a, a special pricing discount, like I mentioned, that I'll share more about, more about at the end. So quick recap on myself. I'm Joshua Benson. I'm a software engineer. I'm the founder of ChartMap. I studied computer science and software engineering in university. In these last uh, nine years, I've spent focused on trading automation. And I studied pattern recognition techniques under Daniel Rowe with a particular focus on trend pattern finding uh, using market geometry specifically, which was absolutely pivotal for me because that skill set became the backbone of chart map. And what really, I mean, that's it's why I'm here today is um, that that education um, and spending just many, 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 I mean, it's got to be over a thousand hours at this point in the charts learning this method and it's really shaped the way that I view the markets and then therefore, um, you know, where my, my development efforts have been as a software engineer. All right. So we're going to get into some fun stuff. We'll look at some charts. We'll look at chart map. Uh, I first want to set the stage and give some context so that you understand the credibility of the concepts that are integrated into chart maps design. So You've probably heard the term confluence thrown, ar thrown around a lot in the trading space. Um, it, it tends to be somewhat of a marketing buzzword because the concept resonates with a lot of traders and it makes sense, right? If you have three signals all telling you to go long at the same time, you have a higher expectancy than if you only had one signal, right? The problem is most people don't give enough thought to the characteristics of each signal. Now, obviously, every signal is not created equal. And by that, I mean um, some signals are, are far more predictive than others. But let's just, let's just assume that signals we're talking about do all have positive expectancy, right? They check that box where, on average, over time, they, they have a, a forecasting nature, right? It's incredibly important to also consider the relationship of the signals with each other. And this is where... Uh, the the, con the 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 confluence of independent variables comes in. So to truly take advantage of the concept of confluence, we have to be um, combining signals that are in that are independent, where their predictive nature is not derived from the same data. Otherwise, we're actually doing more harm than good by creating a, a false confidence, if you will. And this can be tricky to measure, right? Because market dynamics are are complicated, but a simple example using two momentum oscillators, right, to confirm a direction would be concerning because they're they're likely highly correlated and don't provide a stacking of probabilities. So, it, you know, I mean, if you're putting if you're putting confidence into that decision because two things are saying the same thing. Well, it might just be two things that are actually the same thing, same thing saying the same thing, right? So it's important to carefully consider the level of independence that your signals have when you're trying to leverage the concept of confluence. Remember, this is a business of probabilities. The reality is that there's uh, often some level of correlation between combined signals, but the important thing is to understand for traders thinking probabilistically is that probabilities uh, can indeed be stacked by combining uncorrelated signals. And I bring this up both as an education point, because I think quote unquote confluence gets misused quite often, but also so you can appreciate the approach that ChartMap uses in this regard, uh, which we'll get, get more into uh, later. 
Another popular trading topic is complexity, especially as it relates to a trading methodology. You'll hear less is more, simple is better, right? Um, if we're talking about trying to model something in the real world, this is absolutely true. The more degrees of freedom there are, the higher the danger of curve fitting the model, which then ultimately falls apart in out of sample data. If we're talking about simplicity as discretionary traders, this can also be true. We all know that this is a recipe for disaster, right? Information overload plus decision fatigue, especially as traders. There's just a lot of information to digest. And of course, this quote rings true. The more choices we make, or the, the more choices we're forced to make, the more the quality of our decisions deteriorates. But in terms of finding patterns, we have to view complexity differently. And that's really what trading is all about, right? Pattern recognition in some form. Uh, this quote rings true, faced with information overload, we have no alternative but pattern recognition, right? It's how we're wired. And as traders, it's what allows us to find edge. So we can't get away from the, the need as traders to recognize patterns and, and to do so effectively and accurately and to, to, to recognize patterns that actually have a st statistically significant edge, right? That's important. The reality is that pattern recognition can be complicated, especially when you start trying to explain it or put it into a set of rules. It's, it's critical that the traders recognize predictive patterns correctly. This is one of the reasons why automated trading is so challenging because the markets are always changing, which means patterns are always shifting and humans are much better than computers at sensing these changes and automatically adapting. And I'm not saying automated trading is impossible, but I've personally programmed over a hundred automated systems at this point and have quite a good pulse on the fact that it's, it's very difficult to achieve consistency, continued profitability over time using strictly rule sets and mathematical formulas. And this is why I believe that a balance between technology and the human brain is a powerful combination, or you could say technology augmented trading. So my focus with chart map is to innovate on technology part of that balance and make it significantly easier for the trader to make good trading decisions. So I love this quote by Alan Perlis. Fools ignore complexity. Pragmatists suffer it. Some can avoid it. Geniuses remove it. So you you miss out on the pattern the, the power of pattern recognition um, by oversimplifying the problem, right? By ignoring complexity. Um, I think this is why. Um, a lot of certain techniques are so popular because they're simple. Like take, for example, um, you know, like a moving average cross system that everyone knows about because it is simple. People can, um, they can run with a simple concept quite easily. It's very accessible, right? Um, but simplicity is important. I don't want to discredit that completely because, um, because simplicity promotes consistency. So we have to achieve simplicity the correct way, not by ignoring complexity, but by, uh, by removing it. So now we're going to jump into a specific pattern recognition technique called uh, market geometry. Um, if you're familiar with that term, which has been the backbone of my own trading um, and has heavily inspired chart map. In fact, um, like I mentioned earlier, chart map is, is basically an automated version of market geometry. In essence, that's, that's what it is. Um, so to tee this up, I want to give you some background on market geometry before we 
move to the charts and look at chart map itself. So um, let's see, I, I studied under Daniel Rowe for, um, I, don't, I don't know how many years it was, but thousands of hours practicing and applying and applying this 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 concept, um, and number one, it's it's led me to be convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that markets are are not random and price does indeed repeat itself. And number two, it's set me on this path to automating this type of pattern recognition. Um, so. Um, so, so, so some history on on market geometry, um, which I think is is important because it helps to communicate the value and credibility of chart map. Um, market geometry takes advantage of the relationship that exists between price and time, and using different chart drawing techniques, we can highlight this relationship to make market predictions. That's the basis, more or less, um, of market geometry. So Roger Babson, I'm just going to give a couple of different examples of market geometry throughout history. Um, he invented the, the normal line, which is shown here in this old news article. On one of his, his, his published charts, he became popular after he made some, some big market predictions that came to fruition uh, in 1929, predicted a, a big market crash. And then uh, a month later, Black Tuesday happened, which signaled the, be the beginning of the Great Depression. Um, then there's um, Andrews pitchforks, which some of you might be familiar with, um, Alan Andrews. Uh, George Merkel developed the original concept of, of median lines, which are a, a derivation of Babson's normal lines. And then Alan Andrews iterated on that, con iterated on that concept um, and came up with the Andrews pitchfork, which probably a lot of you are, are familiar with, um, or at least trend lines and trend channels, right? There, there's the book that came out in 1948 called uh, technical analysis of stock trends, which which is uh, one of, if not the earliest publications on the topic of trend lines and trend channels. So I'm sure you're picking up on the theme here, right? All these guys are using some form of drawing technique to assist in pattern recognition. Specifically <clears throat> to identify price channels. They have the, ex the expectation that if if the current channel that defines the current trend of price um, can be identified early enough, then there's some predictive nature or forecasting opportunity there. And this is a, a picture of the, uh, the normal line. Actually, no, this one is the, th this is a rough sketch of the, the original median line from Alan Andrews. Okay, so, Market geometry is, it's a proven analysis technique. It's been used for a very long time. And the simple reason for that is that it's very powerful for anticipating price movement, which of course is exactly what every trader is after, right? So I'm gonna move to a chart here and, and give you first a manual demonstration of the type of market geometry uh, drawing technique. And that'll kind of tee us up for um, for chart map. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> this is a, a gold 15 minute chart. Um, I scrolled through, this is like a, uh, I don't know, 10,000 bar chart. I scrolled through to find a good example to show you guys. So yes, this is a, a cherry picked example from the standpoint of, you know, I wanted to find something that I could showcase, um, you know, what I'm trying to explain to you guys easily. Um, but this happens all the time, right? So this is something that you can apply, um, you know, depending on the time frame on a daily multi-day basis or, or, or intraday, mul multiple times a day is what I mean. Um, it happens all the time, right? So uh, a lot of you guys have probably drawn trend channels. Um, and typically, Right, you're looking for major swing highs, major swing lows, and you're connecting, connecting those and drawing your channel. Right, there's a couple ways you could draw this channel: um, low to low, 
Um, you can also draw it high to high, right? Like this and go to the low. So there's already a nuance right there, right? Because there's multiple swings that we can select, but um, to put it short and sweet, what, what you want to do with this technique is use what's called sliding parallels, which is simply a copy of one of the lines off the channel. So it's basically a parallel line of the same slope as the original trend channel. And you want to validate that channel slope by um, matching it up with intermediate swing highs and lows. And um, that'll help you confirm what the ideal positioning of that channel is. So just as an example, um, typically if I'm looking for, like let's say we're, <clears throat> we're here, right? And I'm looking for, um, you know, some. I'm, I'm looking for an area. I want. I want to find an area that I have some level of, of confidence in, and pull them to intermediate swings. And um, I mean, before we even, before we even see what unfolds, you can already see the confirmation of this slope, right? <clears throat> so rather than drawing from the low, from low to low, if we go high to high. We can see that we have multiple touches um, all along these intermediates, the, the, the intermediate, the sliding parallel. And so this illustrates the, the idea of using sliding parallels to validate the channel. And it's not just validating the channel, it's validating the slope, because once you have a, validate, a validated slope, um, you're able to actually pull off a lot more information from a given channel right so like in this case because we have a clearly strong area because there's so many areas re getting rejected from this sliding parallel you would have reason to expect again because this this slope is validated and so intuitively you might not draw to that this this lowest low um because you go high to high back to the low because the slope's validated i would have more confidence to do that right and that that ends up giving us support again. I I don't want to be. I, I understand this is this is hindsight, right? Um, I'm just illustrating a, a point, but this is something that can be done um, in in real time because um, as as swings unfold, you just look for how things are lining up um, in on at one given slope versus another. You're comparing to see okay, what's giving me the most confluence or lineup of swings. So this is the this is the general idea. That's very very powerful when you get when you get a lot of practice and um, you get used to identifying the slopes, um, and this is the basis of chart map, is I identifying these types of trend channels that are validated for slope, and um, and automatically plotting those to your chart. So you can see that this is a lot of work, right? Um, that's essentially, I mean, chart map is trying to, we talked about decision fatigue, right? We talked about um, not ignoring complexity, not not dumbing down the model, the analysis model, um, but just removing the complexity altogether. And that's that's really what we're trying to do with chart map. So in short, chart map is an automated support and resistance software for NinjaTrader that runs many, many simulations across multiple timeframes to, to identify the prevailing uh, price structure, uh, particularly um, the active slope, like I just demonstrated on, on this chart, um, to, to, to find geometry patterns. And um, because of the massive computational demand, of the many simulations being run to generate the output, ChartMap uses cloud computing where the bulk of the, com the computations are offloaded to the cloud. So that performance is fast. And then the outputs are transmitted directly to your NinjaTrader charts in the form of a heat map in real time. So 
there's a lot that could be said about the technology side of chart map. I mean, it truly is a technical feat to make this kind of analysis accessible. Uh, the pattern finding algorithm, the cloud computing, the heat map rendering. Um, let, let's just let's just go take a look at chart map. That, that's that's enough uh, enough of that. So, all right, here's a a Nasdaq fifteen minute chart. <clears throat> all right, so welcome to chart map. You can see the the heat map visual um, that's, um, you know, you've got your your kind of hot, cold color scheme that's all selectable. So you can go with a different theme if you'd like. There's some different customization. You can go with a grayscale and a custom, custom color grayscale um, or something with a different theme like this. Um, so you have some, some, some options there as well as an opacity slider. So you can easily integrate chart map into your analysis process to whatever extent you'd like, right? Meaning, you know, you could really fade this into the background or you can make it very prominent depending on, you know, to what extent and, and in what way you, you want to incorporate chart map. Um, so, We've come up with a new rendering approach, rendering approach um, in NinjaTrader, so so that these these areas can be displayed as this pixel granular heat map. So that in and of itself was a huge technological feat to 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 get that working correctly. There's still um, some polish that needs to be made, um, but we'll we'll make it happen. We're again we're we're constantly rolling out updates, and it'll just keep getting better and better. It's very important to keep in mind that there is zero back painting or ghost outputs going on. So what you see is what was available for making a trade decision on that bar in real time. So a uh, chart map can be used on any bar type, uh, any bar period, but you'll get the most heat map resolution on lower time frames, And that's because Chart map calculates for multiple time frames and then compiles the data into a combined output. So um, it, it combines all that into whatever chart you're using. Um, jump back over to Turbo. Okay. One of the really cool things about chart map is, I mean, because of this heat map characteristic, right? It's designed with independent confluence in mind, like we talked about earlier. Confluence is only as powerful as the uncorrelatedness of each contributing signal. And we've designed chart map, um, the the algorithm, the underlying algorithm, to to isolate each support and resistance area from distinct data, which means that overlapping areas, which are shown, you can see the uh, the change in in color intensity, right? Where that would that would represent the hotter the area, the, the, the heat where there's multiple areas coming together for a stronger confluence. Um, those tend to have an increased likelihood of acting as support or resistance. Um, and I want to be clear, I've done a lot of statistical testing to, to know that channels are statistically predictive over random, but it does, it does not mean that chart map is intended to be followed blindly. It's intended to be leveraged by serious traders to effortlessly increase their awareness of valid support and resistance, right? This is, um, these are, these are areas that are being computed from, from price data. Um, and if, so it, it, it's increasing the awareness of, of, of valid support and resistance so that traders can focus on making better trading decisions. That's, that's the basis of chart map. So chart map elevates your analysis by adding instant, um, context to your charts, essentially. All right. So. Um, I'm going to just give you guys a little bit more of a, a look. I'm going to scroll back on the NASDAQ chart and just show you guys, um, some more data. And then at the end, I'm going to show you guys how you, you guys can, um, 
actually sign up for free um, for a free trial chart map, and then you guys can try it on your own charts. Uh, I will mention, as I say that, um, and I think I mentioned it earlier, we just rolled out an update uh, today, actually. Um, and so some of the, the data is unavailable. We're still uh, migrating over the server. And so the, some of the instruments are unavailable until that, that update is fully rolled out. So once it is, and it should be done most likely by tomorrow, um, we'll, we'll be good to go. Um, so if you do, if you sign up today and you want to try it out, you'll be able to pull up some historical data like the NASDAQ, but not everything will be quite available just yet. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, but you, I mean, literally you could, you could go install this and get this running on your own charts in, in probably five minutes from now. So, okay. I'll, I'll share more about that in just a minute, but I just wanted to scroll. I, I know this is, uh, you know, I mean, this is valuable guys, because of course this is, this is hindsight, right. And everybody, um, like to, likes to pick that apart. And I, I agree that has a weakness, right? Like using hindsight bias to evaluate something, but just keep in mind that this is, um, nothing is back painted here. This is all data that was available in real time. So I just want to show you like how, how price behaves with chart map. Um, and you can decide for yourself, um, how it might be layered into your trading process because, um, it, it can very, very easily be be added into really any methodology to give you context of, of nearby support and resistance um, in, a, in a very powerful way, very, very unique support and resistance. So um, yeah, here's where this is the, the new data that just got uploaded for the new version today. So here's where the data starts. And you can see where the correction gives us a low right here. And then um we break through we get pull back you can you, you'll see where it just starts getting captured on on different channels um that, that continue to work for quite a while this one this one isn't the strongest but then again you have you got to keep in mind um the strength of the area right so relative to other areas you have a higher um intense a higher intensity area right here and that in this case ends up being the one that gives you uh, more respect for a longer period of time. Um, and something something also to keep in mind with chart map is the areas, um, because the market, the, the data and the, the way that the market's moving is just changing so much. Sometimes you'll get periods where um, like this, for example, right, you have a, a tiny little area that, you know, when you have tons of areas, it looks fairly insignificant, but then you'll get kind of sparse areas where it doesn't look like much, but it's sparse and they'll just be spot on. And you'll get, um, you'll get really good reactions. Um, so really right, right. Here's where, here's where it gets lit up. We get a nice kiss goodbye, kind of a pull back to the area. And then we fall into this channel. And that gives us some nice touches. There's the low right here. We kind of continue to find support <clears throat> off this kind of conglomeration of areas here. And pull back to the underside of this brighter area. This one breaks. And then you can see once, once a strong area starts getting disrespected, that the, the the model is is computing a channel score, and once that channel score is is decided that it's sufficiently weak, it'll it'll fade out that channel. Um, so it's constantly reevaluating um, how well areas are getting respected and adjusting accordingly. So really, you know, the what I just want to demonstrate is the the clear predictiveness of the areas, right? Nothing works 100% of the time. Um, but again, this is a business of probabilities. And so it's a matter of finding ways to um, pull together independent confluence that can compound your probabilities, right? And so that's really what chart map is, 
is designed to do. This will layer into your analysis to give you um, more context for making trading decisions. So, um, I'll just quickly quickly scroll all the way forward. Again, some of the some of the markets I haven't fully uploaded yet because of the update. And so, um, if you're interested in other markets, and I'll share what markets um, we do support, um, you're welcome to go fire it up on your on your own system on your own time and and give it a whirl. See uh, see how it looks on your own charts. So. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there. So some information about how you guys can get started. Um, chart map is regularly $5.99 a year. So for you guys, um, I'm offering a discount of $4.99 per year, which is a price lock guarantee uh, for, for those of you that, that do sign up at this discounted price. Um, that applies after a seven day free trial. So it's no risk to you guys. I mean, if you if you think that there's some value there, why not just try it on your charts, right? And and see um see if it's giving you um, yeah, see if it's giving you value before you pay for it, right? Um, I really want to make sure that um you're you're paying for something that's providing value. And so that's why we offer a seven day free trial. So no harm in, in giving it a whirl. All software up, upgrades are included. And again, like I've said, we are constantly working on it, improving it, um, not only on kind of the visual side, but we just released a an update to the, the pattern recognition mechanism uh, or, or, or um, algorithm today. And we've got uh, more um, in the pipeline as well as additional um, support and resistance analysis models that we're going to layer in. That's the beauty of this heat map approach is we can grab independent methods and layer them all together to, to create a confluence, right? And so that's really the, the vision of chart map is to continue building out or integrating um, additional models. And so this is your, your chance to grab it at a, a discounted price um, as we continue to build it out. And um, yeah, would love to, would love to have you on board. So chart map is for Ninja Trader. Um, th those you can see here that the markets that um, we currently support: ES, MES, NQM, NQ, YM, <clears throat> MYM, RTYM, 2K, CLM, CLG, CMG, and um, If you go to chartmap.com/discount, that's how you can access the uh, the discount page. That'll give you. So you'll basically just sign up through through paypal it'll it'll sign you up for the, the discounted 5.99 per year but it starts as a seven day free trial so you won't be you won't be charged um so you can cancel it anytime uh before you before the seven days is up so um i don't have an exact date yet for when the discount offer will expire but i'd ask you guys start your free trials within the next couple of days ideally because i will be taking that that link down uh before too long so I'll also mention that since chart map hasn't been released for very long, uh, we don't have much out yet in terms of content and videos, but if you have any questions at all, please do reach out and we'll be, we'll be happy to help. So um, with that, Barry is asking about uh, lag latency. It's, it's all real time. So again, the models are getting run on a server because it's so compute intensive. But as soon as it's calculated, it's it's uploaded. So it's it's fast enough to be negligible. Let's put it that way. You know, Brian, I, I don't use cycles. It's something that I've always had on my my radar, but it's just it's something that I've to this point haven't had the capacity to to dig into. I think it would pair really well with with market geometry. I know guys that do it. No, Gene, it'll run on any any time frame. So all all of the the analysis is pre calculated. So whatever chart you're running, it'll just um, it'll just apply it to that chart for that that time frame in that period. So it'll 
it'll just fit it to that period if that makes sense. So anything will work. Uh, a couple of you guys asking about how to use chart map and you know short of again the the goal of chart map is is to provide traders with with effortless market awareness and so support and resistance is such a universal concept and that's i mean it, it's so powerful because whether you're looking for entry confirmation or you're looking for uh, where to consider taking some profit right on an exit or uh, right like, there's there's it, it, it's it, it it gives you um just an instant awareness of where the probability of a price reversal is higher than normal and so just imagine how useful that could be to your trading if you have that kind of constant awareness. Yeah, let me let me post that link. It's chartmap.com slash discount. I will post it. I'll just put the link in the chat. Okay, guys. Well, thank you for your time. Um, I hope to see you guys around. I'd love to uh, chat with some of you guys and um, get your feedback. I'm always looking for feedback to continue to improve the software and uh, would love to have you on board. So thanks again for your time and you guys have a good rest of your Thursday. All right. Well, thank you again to Joshua for taking the time to share with us today. If you enjoyed today's session, we hope to see you in future webinars. Follow us on social media for alerts about upcoming events and other Ninja Tier ecosystem news. We would like to remind you that the information provided was that of ChartMap and not of NinjaShare. All information was for educational purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you in future webinars. Happy trading from all of us here at the NinjaTrader ecosystem.